Rural Heritage on RFD-TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi-monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small-scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319-362-3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Occupying most of a block in downtown Kidron, Ohio, is a store unlike any other. Begun more than a half century ago as a small shop filling the needs of nearby Amish farmers, Layman's Hardware has since become the go-to source for many people interested in living a more sustainable lifestyle. And while the store is firmly dedicated to serving the needs of today's farmers, homesteaders, and others working off the land, its founder, Jay Layman, maintains a strong affinity to the past. He's collected a tremendous number of vintage and antique tools, implements, appliances, and vehicles, and has many of them on display scattered throughout the sprawling store. He spent an afternoon showing us some of these pieces. This week, we'll focus on some of the smaller household and farming items. Come back next week when we look at some of the bigger pieces Jay has saved, restored, and put on display. I got my start in the local uh, garage here in Kidron, being a mechanic, and that's what what got me interested in doing mechanical things and, and repairing, repairing things. Back in 1955, I had just come back from Europe uh, building houses for refugees over there, and I had, uh, had no job. And it so happened that the hardware, which the local hardware here in Kidron was for sale, and I was looking for a job. And so I decided, well, this might be a good job. Although I had no experience in hardware business, but I did have a lot of experience in mechanical work. I was a mechanic for a number of years, and at that time, uh, repairing things was a big part of the hardware. Repairing engines, repairing gas refrigerators, uh, and, and uh, wash machines, so forth. So that part is what really interested me more than the retail end of it did. And so uh, basically I was looking for a job, and this was a good opportunity. At first, a uh, big part of our business was uh, uh, catering to the Amish and their needs, doing repairs for their uh, washing machines and stoves and so forth. And as time went on, uh, it became, uh, well, especially in the late 70s, when, uh, when, it was, when it appeared like we were going to run out of energy, out of gas, when there was a gas shortage, everybody was worried what they're going to do. And so they looked to the Amish and said, well, they, they, they're doing all right. Let's see what they're doing. And that brought them to our place because we, we were serving the Amish. And so um, it made sense uh, for them to start getting ready to live without electricity. And that's what really put us on the map. When the oil embargo came on and everybody was looking uh, for hand-operated, non-electric things, and the word got out that you go with the layman's for that. We got started mostly by trading in old things. Uh, after the war, everybody sort of wanted to go modern, and a lot of modern things came out. And so people, people um, wanted to get rid of their old things. And I sort of liked these old things, the old stoves. And so we started trading things in and, and kept them. And after a while, I thought, well, this is sort of interesting. I think I'll just keep on uh, collecting antiques. Um, and so a lot of the things we have here as antiques uh, we originally traded in uh, on new things. People were happy to get rid of them. I was happy to get them. A lot of the things that we sold uh, was probably not as good as the things they traded in. The things that they traded in would have lasted a lot longer than the things they bought, although they, they, they look more modern, and so people liked them. And, and I just sort of had a, a, a liking for these old things. Uh, at the time, we didn't have any place to display most of them, so we just sort of stored them in a warehouse. And then eventually, when we had room to display them, we started displaying them. And uh, I would guess right now, maybe 80% of all the antiques we have in here were brought in by somebody uh, who thought we would, might like them and display them. And uh, some of them we bought, some of them are here on loan, um, and some of them are, were donated. There's quite a few things here. They said, uh, my kids don't particularly want them, 
and I, I'd like to see them kept someplace, and uh, I'll bring them to you, and you display them. And in some cases, they say, well, I'll put my name on it, and if my kids later want them, they can come and get it again. If not, they'll just stay here. When you think about it, like that Rumley, a hundred years ago, when there was no computer, no books, no drawings, how did they know how to make a, a tractor like that? Same thing as a cream separator. How did, how did anybody know? Nowadays, when you want to build something, you get in the computer and, and you look up, you get information. They had none of that. But they, they came up with all these good ideas, although as, went on, as time went on, they did improve them. But how they got the original idea how to make things, even that thrashing machine we got. They, they never saw a picture of it. They never knew about a thrashing machine. How did they know how to make one? I was told that that box was made primarily when they built the uh, Panama Canal. They uh, sent thousands of those down there to keep the workers, keep their things cool. The top, the top rim there was about a foot long. That's all ice. And the bottom big door is where you kept your food. I guess they sliced meat or cheese. You can set that different and make different thicknesses of slices. This conservo, I don't know, do you know what a conservo? You used to can, uh, all, everything that they can, they used to use a conservo to, to heat it. Put cans in there and okay. put water at the bottom and put Instead it in of, a stove. Like we put them in a kettle now. Yeah. That scale will weigh 1,600 pounds. Uh, and if you start it, you, you, it's so well balanced that if you start it once like that, It'll go for a long time. It's just, it'll just keep on going like that for a long time. And uh, the, the numbers on the one side go up to 400, and the numbers on the other side go up to 1,600, and you use two weights like this. This one weight here, you need one more weight to weigh 1,600 pounds. Now, if something weighs 1,600 pounds, I don't know how you get it up there to begin with to, 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 to weigh it, but uh, uh, and then these are scales that came out of some uh, warehouses where they used to weigh grain when it, when it came in. That's a turnip cedar planter. And the Timothy, that long there is yeah. a Timothy seed planter. That is just gorgeous. You know, you, roll, the, you take a hold of that, two, those two handles and push it down the field. And then all along, the Timothy seed comes out. And this, this was, if it's all together, it's a, a, a spring, spring harrow, I guess they call it. See, the wheels go on each end. Uh, handle, the, the seat goes on there, that, that all becomes one machine when it's put together, and it's a spring harrow. Oh, this piece here, Jay, with the uh, chain. Oh, that's a, uh, that's a fence maker. Um, the wires go through, there, there's three wires to go through, and, uh, and it turns it, and it twists, uh, somehow it made a fence, okay. fits the fence maker. Uh -huh. Wow. I got a, there's a couple more of those around someplace. And then we got you know all kinds of old washing machines that we that I cleaned up and got them ready, and now we use them for display. And this is an interesting one. This was a, a water a water motor, which you didn't see very often. But you put a water hose on here, and uh, so you run water through it, and that's what made the washing machine work. <laughs> Instead of an electric motor, you had a water motor. Right. <laughs> well, this bathtub came out of a hotel in Dalton. When it tore down, there was, used to be a, a hotel in Dalton. And when they tore it down, um, I got the bathtub out of it. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's narrow, isn't it? Yeah, it is. People weren't, people didn't need gyms back in the day. <laughs> they didn't have to go to fitness centers. They <laughs> fit in those from the work they did. Yeah. Another wash machine, another wash machine, uh, water, water boiler. When, uh, when the people used to wash in a separate house outside, they had to have hot water. So you'd fill this thing with water and build a fire under it and then you dip your hot water out of there to do your washing. The idea there was to um, heat the water for washing. And it's got nice designs on it. Yeah, there's no reason for that other than... Yeah, no. To look other than they had pride in making one. But yeah, they didn't have to put that on there. No. Well, that's the washing machine. And that, that's the washing machine. And then... Uh, Is that a grinder? No. No. Yeah, it was, that's a grinder, okay. yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, with the clamp. Okay. Oh. Uh, cheese press, hmm. another washing machine, and that's a, a water boiler. You'd uh, run, hook up water to that and build a fire in it, and that would heat the water. 
all these old washing machines. This is the ones you were talking about. Maytag made 300 of those, and that's one of the 300 left. It's a very, there's very few people know. In fact, I even wrote to Maytag and asked them about it. And they said, if it's not a Maytag, you must be mistaken. <laughs> so I, sold them, I sent them a picture of it. Right. And then somebody else replied, oh, yeah, we did make, they did make 300 of those one time. I'll be darned. Uh, it's double top Maytag. This one, this one's the ones I worked on the most. No kidding. Yep. That's the Amish, almost every Amishman had a washer like that when I started. Huh. This is double tub one, and that's again a washer and a spinner. The big one is the washer and the small one is the spinner. Um, wow. A wooden one, you put the clothes in there and there's a dash that goes back and forth like this. You know, it used to be that all uh, the houses had curtains hanging up and when you wash them, the curtains sort of go out of shape when they dry, so you stretch them while they're wet. Then they dry, right? Then they, then they hang straight on the window. Wow. Curtain stretch. You, you can adjust it either way, sideways or the other way, but you set it to match your curtains so that as the curtains dry, they keep their shape. And this is a, a sled that comes with wheels or runners. In the summertime, you put the wheels on. In the wintertime, when you have snow, you put the runners on. Yep. That's gorgeous. And that, that is and that, the story on this was, is a guy brought it in, uh, he had it in his chicken house, and the chickens would sit on here and poop all over, you know. Right. So he brought it in with chicken, he pooped all over the place. Yeah. He wanted to know if I wanted to buy it, and I asked him how much he wanted for it, and he told me, I think it was $35. Oh, so I, I bought it and cleaned it off. It didn't look like this when he brought I it in. Understand. I cleaned it all up, hung it up, we used to have it hanging up, and one day a guy came in and he says, you want to... Sell that, that wagon up there. I says, no. He says, would you take $400 for it? I says, no. I figured if he offers me $400, it's worth a lot more than that. It is. So we kept it. And yeah, it's yeah, interesting. It absolutely is. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And it's yeah, with the, yeah, with the runners or yeah. wheels. Depends yeah. winter or summer. Yeah. Oh, another, another old Maytag. Bunch of... Old, old lamps there. Yeah. And so those are, those, these are all for mantles. Yeah. Yep. These are all for mantles. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And there's an interesting thing. They used to <laughs> put that thing on top of their lamp to to heat the water. I mean, for the baby, yeah. keep the uh, milk warm. Huh. This is a washing machine. You put your clothes in here, then you push the thing down and get on the handles and turn them like this. Then it, it rubs, rubs your clothes in here like this. When first uh, washing machines came out, everybody said, well, you can't wash as good a machine. You've got to have your hands that go. So the washing machine guys put these hand, uh, hands on. So the idea is that as this washing machine goes up and down and around, these hands are washing your clothes. That was sort of the idea of telling the people well, we're just yeah. as good as hands. Right, exactly. <laughs> and this is a washing machine too. You put this on the stove to keep your water hot. Then this agitator here, put that down and this, this agitator goes back and forth in here. This is a washing machine too. You put this in a, in a tub of water and you put your clothes in here. Then you get a hold of this and swing it and rub your clothes like that. Again, it's better than rubbing them on the stone. That is gorgeous. Yeah. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. This is a stove I restored. Nice, beautiful. You know, what pride they took in that. They make all that beautiful stuff on there. Oh my. Yeah. But they took great pride in making that look. Where that's at? Uh, Laurel. It's a Laurel, but I don't know where Laurel was made. 
They at one time there were lots of stove manufacturers. Sure. Lots of them. Sure. But they, you know, they've all gone by the way. Those those are all saw sets. You know, when you when the saw is sharpened, you gotta set the teeth right. so they come out right. So it's a, those are all saw sets. This is a drill press, you know. Yeah. You turn this and and then this here follow this keeps to, as you go around, every time you go around, it goes one notch further, so it comes down now. Mm -hmm. And these are old cowbells. All these are all antiques that are hanging up around here. And we sell new cowbells too. What's this? Oh, that's the that's the, uh, to cut grass, and that's a uh, uh, the size uh, corn. Yeah. You know, you, you run it through there, and different size holes, different size grains drop out. Yep. Yep, for your seed corn. Yeah. There's a teeth for a molding. Uh, like a tool and die? Yeah. Uh -huh. Each one, each one uh, has a different shape, right. and it takes three of them to put in a in a mold. And it spins. And it'll make all kinds of. Uh, it'll make the edge whatever shape is on there. That's the kind of uh, edge it'll make. Wow. Here, here's an old, an old stove. At uh, part of an old stove, just part of it. Here's here's a complete one, old, which that would have been sort of the Cadillac too at the, in his yeah. day. And that there is a uh, one of the first uh, Xerox machines. It, it was uh, draftsmen used that to pay to make prints. Copies? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's big white drawers because they had big white sheets. Then they put the sheet on there, and they had special bulbs in there, and that would reproduce the the drawings. Wow! So it was one of the first Xerox machines, right, I guess. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And that there's a peanut uh, peanut grinder. A peanut roaster, I should say. Sure, a roaster. Or it could be a coffee roaster too. Uh huh. This was a, this was a double Man's tub, yeah. double tub wooden washer. Again, back in its days, this was probably the Cadillac and washing yeah. machines. Yeah. What I like particularly, is this, woman's friend, <laughs> and it has double wash, a double ringer. You have a ringer for this one and a ringer for this one, and 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 you can uh, operate just this or just this by the controls on the back. And you put an engine on here, yeah. spin it, so it could wash your clothes and wring them. And Look at the treadmill, horse tread power. Yeah, dog, dog or horse, right. the dogs right. or a horse or exactly. uh, goats. Right. And you, know, you, you, you set at different uh, angles, that makes them go faster or slower. And you hook up a butter churn or a meat grinder or a corn uh, sheller or something like that. Right. Um, that's, a food, that's a cheese press there. Okay. You turn, you turn that uh, with those two handles there. Right. You turn it, and that brings the brings the bottom up, presses the cheese. And that's to squeeze the moisture out. Yep. And is this that's that's a sweeper. You pump that, it makes a vacuum. When you pump when you pump that thing, it makes a vacuum. <laughs> it's a it's a sweeper. And the bottom one is a sweeper too. It has a handle on too. You pump that, and that tr makes a vacuum. So it makes a vacuum sweeper. And this is a press. This press here does three things. It, it, it cleans the grain, it sizes the grain, and it polishes the grain. It's got brushes and stuff inside, so when you put the grain in, it sizes it, then it's got brushes in it, and it cleans it, or, or uh, uh, has a fan in it that cleans it, gets the dirt out, then it has the brushes in it that polishes it. But years ago, Again, people took pride in what, what they took to the fair, so they wanted their grain clean and polished. So they run it through one of those machines. Here's two things that I don't know. I have a number of things in there that I don't know what they are. And those are two things that I don't know what they are. Um, but there's a milking machine. When you pump that handle, there's, a, there's two vacuums there. When you pump that handle, those vacuums go up and down and make a vacuum. And it's the same principle used nowadays where you make a vacuum to do your milking. And you push that along back of a cow and hooked it up and, and you pump it and the, the vacuum. Uh, the, here's another, what is it? Here's the what is it. I, on this one here, uh, the, there's a string went up here and a string went up here. Then you pull on the string and this thing would drop out. Uh, I don't know what it is. And then you push it, push it back in again. And you, I don't know what it is. This is a, a meat curing trough. Not a watering trough, a meat curing trough. They put, uh, make a, a brine in there, put water and salt in there, make a brine, and put their hams in there and let them cure. Wow. 
Okay, this is a fence maker. You, uh, uh, well, there's a picture here of it. Here, see, there's wires that go through. Every hole, everyone has a wire through it. Right. And as you go down, it uh, uh, twists and it weaves it. Yeah, it, make, it makes a makes a uh, wire fence. Holy cow! Yeah, uh, each one each one of these red things has one wire through it, and you and you move it down and keep spinning it, and it twists. And this came out of a blacksmith shop that uh, burned down and burned all the handles, the handles out. Got burned, yeah. yeah, so it was the all. Iron remained. But every one is a different shape. Yep. So right. the, the blacksmith, he always knew which one to pick up, exactly. depending on the job he had to do. Exactly. That's a butchering table. You put your uh, hog on there when you're cleaning and butchering it, and all the things you don't want fall down, sure. and, you, and you work on it to, to do the butchering. And this, this, this came out of a barn. Uh, it used to be a, a feed cart. You'd fill this thing up with feed, and you'd push it through the barn, and then you'd take a shovel and give each cow, you know. I see these all the time, yeah. but never out of wood. <laughs> yeah. That is beautiful. Yeah, right. That is for... Oh, that. That's a silo that, elevator. It's, a, it's an elevator the box is missing. You know, there was a box on there. And then as you move grain from one floor to the other, that there wheeled it up. Yeah, it came out of an old mill. So you knew what that was. Not many people know what that is. Well, you got a picture today. It looks just like that, but it's all metal. And it's not little square. It's all continuous. Yeah, is, yeah the principle is still the same. It is. Yeah. Absolutely it is. And so it's got holes in it to go the other direction. If yeah, I think so. You change the pins. Isn't that neat? Yeah. <laughs> uh, on quite a number of things, I have a sign on it. What is it? And, uh, and the reason the sign is on there is that I didn't know what it was when it was brought in. But because of the sign, some people told me what it is. And so some of the things I now know what they are. But I, I have quite a few things that, that I don't know what, what it is. And um, nobody else seems to know what it is. But at one time, it was, a, it was made for some function. And this is a uh, butter maker. You put your butter in there, and you turn this thing. And this thing rolls back and forth and kneads the butter. As this thing goes, oh, it's all tied up. But as, as you turn out a handle, that thing keeps going back and forth here, and these things go down in the butter, and like kneading the butter. I don't think you'll see that any place in a retail store. No. It's the turquette of the manure. Yeah. Later they were used for feeders. Right. They, in right. the back, they put the manure up, and later they put the track in the front of the cows, and then they'd use them for feed. Yeah, you pull that chain, and the whole thing comes down, you know. Then when it's full, you bring it up. And, and it's got a transfer thing on it. You can go to that room or this room or straight ahead out to the manure spreader. Then, then you turn it back down. That's all the time we have this week to spend with Jay Lehman, founder of Lehman's in Kidron, Ohio. But be sure to come back next week when Jay shows us more of the amazing antique machines and tools he has restored and displayed at his store including an old Rumley oil pull tractor, a Model T Ford automobile, a wooden threshing machine, the skeleton of a timber frame barn, and much, much more. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362 3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press which also offers a complete line of back to the land books, DVDs and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.